right, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you know, and today I'm excited to be standing in front of a late model 2023 Rivian R1S SUV. Um, there's a friend of mine who you're going to meet shortly who uh, took delivery of this just a couple of weeks ago, early into 2024. Uh, brand new machine so he's offered me the opportunity to come and visit him on his beautiful property here outside of the Toronto area and have a look at this beautiful machine because I, I've seen them statically as you folks know and I've done some some video from sitting in them at car shows but I haven't had an opportunity to take one for a drive so what better conditions than a nice little snowy day? We've got minus 10 conditions here, a slight wind. So if you if you hear my voice starting to go and blabber, that's because the cold is catching up to me as I'm outside here filming. So I want to thank John Dixon, and you'll you'll meet him in a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit about this Rivian vehicle. If you folks don't already know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on specs because I've covered it in car shows. But the R1S is their kick at the can for the full size three row SUV. Uh, market and as you've heard me say over the last year or so that market is hot 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 and continuing to get hotter and the R1S is that this is a high quality vehicle this is a quad motor and a little piece of trivia you can tell by looking at yellow calipers and there's something else that's yellow, I think, in the inside that distinguishes that this is a quad motor versus a non-quad motor. And the quad motor is very impressive because it gives you a motor in each wheel hub. And again, factoring the power, the instantaneous torque and power delivery to those motors and electronic and computerized torque vectoring, these things are very, very capable units to, you could take this to Moab and, and do some serious, serious off-roading. Now you might have to maybe maybe beef up the wheels, the, the, the rubber on it, but these things will lift and these things are very capable. And then after that, go, go to Fortino's or go to Costco and do your shopping and take the family to the beach or whatever. They're that kind of a vehicle, extremely capable. So really, really impressive, if you're, especially if you're in the off-roading, but just as a capable vehicle and here where folks live outside of the urban areas on smaller roads that don't necessarily get plowed that quickly, especially when we get snows, they're not a bad option to have where you have that height clearance and that all-wheel drive capability. So the quad motor is definitely something. So it is, it is really a high-end product for that niche market of the three-row SUVs. Now, while I'm still on the interior, on the exterior, excuse me, of course, these things have a big frunk. If you could pop the frunk for me, sir, that would be great on cue. There we go. So it's a power lift. And again, Rivian was kind of the first one to kind of show how much room you could put in a frunk here uh, in something like this. So that it's a straight flush hood rather than with Cybertruck or with the Ford F-150 or Silverado or Denali, where we're seeing the whole, the whole front grille kind of go up in that L fashion. Very roomy uh, size trunk. Um, I'll put the numbers up for cargo space here for the front. Lots of stuff. You can, uh, I believe it's drainable. So if you wanted to do a tailgate party, throw some ice and a keg. Not that I uh, promote drinking and driving because I don't, but if you're at somebody's place and staying over, you could certainly uh, do some partying out of this thing. But very utilitarian in the ability to carry stuff uh, in a safe, concealed manner, uh, keeping the elements out of it as well. All right, if you're looking at storage space, just again, give you a sense of how high this, I'm about 5'6", and you can see this vehicle's dwarfing me a bit. So uh, they're pretty substantial vehicles. You gotta make sure you have enough room to park this, especially if you're gonna park it in the garage. But really, really nice vehicle. So I'm gonna get my uh, partner here to open the rear as well. It's a two-part rear section, so it's got a power for the three quarters of the top section, as you can see. And that's pretty cool because it's got this low lift over if you're just going in to reach for stuff. Uh, it's at your level basically, so easy to kind of load uh, stuff in and out from this perspective. But then if you do want to lower this, you just press this button and it lowers down. And you have this flat extended kind of small tailgate almost here. Which again, helps for uh, hauling stuff. I think this is a four foot wide measurement. I haven't measured it. We're shaking our heads. But I'm assuming that if you put those uh, second row uh, seats down, because the third rows are down, you should be able to fit a four by eight sheet of plywood or drywall in here. It might have to be on an angle just for, for to angle over the wheel arches. I'm not sure I would have to measure that, but very substantial size. And again, that's what, you know, the U in SUV is utilitary, utility. And you want these things to offer as much opportunity for owners to use them in many different ways as possible. And, and Rivian certainly does that with the R1S. 
they've thought of a lot of things here to incorporate the use cases for these kinds of folks. All right, so I'm here, the owner of this lovely vehicle, John Dixon. John, how are you? Ken, good to see you again. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, having me come out. Uh, just as a side note, John is actually the president of the Tesla Owners Club of Ontario, which I'm a proud member of. So it's interesting that we've got a couple of Tesla guys uh, that not only love Teslas, but that love a lot of electric vehicles, right, yep, John? Because you've a, been supporting everything for Hyundai quite some time. Five and, uh He's out today, but we have a Hyundai Ionic 5, so all EV. Nice, all EV, yeah, and you know, folks who follow me on Twitter know I just went all EV as a family. We got rid of our second ice car and got a 2023 Kona Soul EV and absolutely love it. So we're 100% EV too. So tell us about this vehicle, John. You know, you've had a Model X for quite some time. Yep. You're very familiar with Tesla, obviously being one of the early Tesla adopters back in 20, when did you get your S? 2012, 11 years I've been driving different yeah. types. I've had every model uh, other than the Y. Yep. So pretty familiar, and I still have the X. Frankly, I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to keep, this one or the X. But <laughs> um, so this I ordered in 2018. Yep. I really liked uh, some of the things I was hearing from Rivian. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just sort of how they ramped up. I liked uh, what I heard from R.J. Scarins, their yep. founder. Yep. Uh, he's certainly not as polarizing as some other people that we know. Of course, but hey. And, um, <laughs> so. 2018, it's been on order, and uh, oh wow, okay. They weren't ready for Canada until they had service facilities yep. uh, uh, available. They've been out in BC over a year, yep. and uh, that's right. So you know, it, it was in the app. You were able to uh, configure it and get your pricing and everything a long time yep. ago. So basically, you know, we were sort of following through yep. uh, online and watching when this so, new facility was going to open, yeah. and, and it opened uh, in, in Toronto. You're talking yes, about it's yes, in Vaughan, in Ontario. Vaughan. Yeah, yeah. And so the buying experience was was, was generally easy. But did you feel the communications during that were, were adequate enough? Because that typically um, when startups they're, are they're, trying. They're pretty right? good on, yeah. um, they would always sort of update you every yeah. couple of months. Okay, good. a thing in your configuration that yeah. would say approximate delivery time. Okay. As we got closer to delivery, the people that I did end up talking to were really good, but they're very hard to get a hold of. Right. Frankly, yeah. much like Tesla. Yeah. You text, they don't answer right away. You yeah. get one person this time, another person yeah. the next time. Um, but, you know, when I actually picked up my vehicle um they were very very uh, nice frankly all ex tesla employees oh yeah every single yeah. person i met or talked on the phone is ex tesla i heard that about so them, got yeah. that experience yeah. yeah and um nice you know they explained it very well and uh, the the quality has been impeccable there's only been a couple tiny tiny little niggly things so yeah um yeah and your delivery was non-eventful basically nope. good experience they yep. walked you through everything i mean yep. you obviously know a lot about evs you're one of the yep. pioneers and getting a DV adoption, so well-versed in it, but you know, I'm sure they did a nice walkthrough for you and tell you, yep. talk to you about features and things like that. It was the last delivery of 2023, uh, oh, December wow. 29th. So wow. at that point, okay. they delivered somewhere in between 40 and 50 here in Ontario. So obviously a beautiful, you know, this is a, a um, as you mentioned, this is one of the first launch editions, right? Yes. And so it's in a different color and it's a little hard to see because we've got snow coming down, but it, it is a beautiful green color. Uh, now you equipped this one, this is a quad motor. You've got this, you were telling me a little bit off camera that you did a little bit of changes to the config than normal, is that correct? Well, no, basically the launch edition doesn't really have, uh, it, it was much like back in the day, signature editions for Tesla okay. Model S or Model mm -hmm. X. So the only choice really is tires or yeah. wheels, and they didn't charge it and with the, with the colors, change from I guess. 20, yeah. 21, 22. Right. Uh, the color, uh, this launch okay. screen was only available in the launch edition, and you can't get it anymore. Yep. Now, I know you've only had this for a couple of weeks. You yep. really haven't had a chance to do a lot of driving on it. But by what you've seen so far, what is your early indication for uh, battery ranges? And this is the quad, so you have the large the large battery size, correct, on this? This is the large battery, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's rated somewhere around 452 kilometers mm -hmm. in what they call conserve mode, okay. which only uh, runs the front motors, but there's four different modes. Um, the range seems fine. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's little things I've noticed because I can I, I can compare it directly. Like I drove my Model X yesterday quite extensively, so there's definitely back to back that I can compare. Interesting, yeah. And I would say that little things like, for example, I, I preconditioned the car before I came. I made sure yep. it was topped up for a charge, and I, I preconditioned the uh, interior. Yep. Tesla warms up way faster from okay. the app. Drivability, it's quite different. It is a truck. There's yeah. absolutely no doubt about it. The interior is top notch. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure Ken's going to show you that in a minute. Yep. Uh, again, comparing to Tesla, light years ahead of Tesla in quality of materials, uh -huh. in color coordination, you know, but uh, you get used to it over time. Yep. And uh, I would say certainly when you think about it, these vehicles have only been on the road in, in North America for two years. Yeah. yeah. And Tesla's like 11, 12 years. So yeah. uh, they're certainly 
well advanced. And most opinion. of these have been in the mid to southern states. There's not a lot of a lot of right. these in cold climate. Yes, right. we're seeing in Colorado and so, in Washington and some of the pack northwest U.S. Obviously, where they've been adopted a little earlier. But you know, these, it's a really good good test case to start seeing these out in the colder weather climates because we know that they perform well in the heat. There's no right. issues there. But right. you know, this week we've had like it's minus 10 right now with a bit of a wind. You know, it's, we've had minus 20, minus 25. It's other parts of Canada into the minus 45, minus 50 centigrade. Before you're going on a trip, like we're going to Paris, Ontario this afternoon, yeah. and I will warm up the car from my app inside. Yep. Uh, you know, you uh, make sure you're at your optimum range for where you want to drive to. Warming up the car will warm up the battery pack. Yep. You've got full regen when you leave, which puts energy back into the battery. Yep. And that's what you have to do. But people are just jumping in the vehicles when they're cold, wondering why they can't charge when they drive five miles to a supercharger or yeah. a high power charger well look yeah. the battery's not warm but take the charge so yeah it's exactly all about education yeah and uh, there's a lot of this fud as they call it fear unknown yeah. and doubt up there about yeah. uh, or out there about evs and you got uh, it we are you know prime <laughs> prime examples of that it definitely works definitely we, works we and, go and all people are complaining place. about all the stuff in on in uh Cold weather, well, Norway is one of the biggest markets for Tesla per capita. Yeah, uh, you know, for EVs in general, EVs in general right? Exactly. Ninety percent market share yeah. EVs now. Any last thoughts about this vehicle before we go for a quick drive that you want to just share with uh, people out there who are thinking about it? No, not really. I mean, I think uh, Rivian's got their stuff together. Frankly, mm -hmm. um, are, are they where Tesla is? No, but I mean, what do you expect after <laughs> you know ten years of difference in, in, in market? So I think they've done a great job. Use case, they, yeah. as you said earlier, something about adventure. That's yeah. sort of what they're they're trying to appeal to is people that like to do off-roading and camping and and yeah. uh, you know that kind of thing you can uh, tow i mean you yeah, can tow exactly. quite adequately exactly. all this kind of stuff yeah for sure well thanks john okay. again for letting me uh use this let's go for a quick okay, drive and sure. then uh, i'll give you my thoughts okay all right thanks all right just some quick thoughts in driving the rivian rs so it's my first time actually being uh in one and sitting in one any long period of time and i have to tell you it's a very comfortable ride i'm going to get john to explain the menus and give us a walkthrough in a sec which i'll get on camera but just from a driving, just going through some of these country roads, you know, got a little bit of mix of snow and wet, as I mentioned, the temperatures. Um, it's a nice drive. You really have to, uh, you know, put some muscle into the accelerator to get this thing moving. It's, uh, it's got a bit of weight to it. So, I, and I think which is a good thing because you're you're throwing around a lot of weight in this vehicle. So you want to be able to manage that uh, that weight appropriately. And I think you know having the accelerator that's not too touchy that you really have to put some effort into get going. I think is a good thing. Uh, in my book. Um, let me just make this turn here. This has full one gen, uh, one pedal capability, so the regen is on high. And like any one pedal system, it just takes a couple of minutes to get used to feathering the accelerator and, and fig figuring out the points of, of where stuff bites a little more than others, but uh, works really well. When you're used to one pedal, it's pretty easy to get used to new systems, I have to tell you. But this is a pretty quiet ride for the size and cavernous volume that the vehicle has. Um, even with these um, uh, tires, uh, winter rated tires, which you will hear, uh, okay, that's standard uh, with the noise. It's still a pretty good uh, vehicle and get up to some speed here a little bit on these streets. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice, you know, I mean, uh, John mentioned, you know, this is more truck than, <laughs> than SUV and I would agree with that. You know, I would attribute this to like, you know, maybe booting around in a, in a 150 or something like that. Um, just trying to figure out the wipers. There they are. I have not been trained on this vehicle yet, so I got to figure all that out. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, but you know, maneuvers quite well. Um, easy to steer, easy, good, great visibility, a nice big wing, windscreen. So really good visibility. And if we get up to a little bit of speed, you know, again, excellent pickup, excellent torque and all EVs have that. So you know, you certainly don't need 800 horsepower just to get around the city and do groceries. But, you know, as a comfort level, uh, able to find a nice position on these seats. They're extremely comfortable, supportive, uh, nice ergonomics from the armrests here to the screen, to the major controls, your wiper controls, signals, uh, stock for gears, um, wind power windows, your HVAC. Everything is really with, with an easy reach, nice big um, um, icons as well so easy to see things which i like do we go straight john or yeah, one go more? Straight, we'll go straight one more time so i'm just trying to think what else i can talk about here um yeah it's a really easy vehicle just to, just to pick up and go in and even despite its size um quite easy to maneuver around um, uh, it's deceiving um how agile this vehicle is now correct me this doesn't have rear steering correct no no okay i wasn't sure if rivian did that yet um so even without that it's still a pretty agile vehicle I know you can change settings for both steering 
type of sensation. Uh, John's going to walk through some of the modes, driving modes, and how that impacts range. But you know, here we are at 84%, showing 300, almost 380 kilometers of range with these uh, minus uh, nine, minus 10 degree temps that we're having right now. So it's pretty cool. So pretty good. Um, you know, really nice vehicle, and I am I am uh, you know uh, impressed with the sound quality. They've done a good job in sound deadening materials and the use of nice seals for windows and doors. Um, don't really hear a lot of air noise, even though this is a boxy product and it's going to buffer wind a little more than let's say a Model Three will from an aerodynamic perspective. But it's a relatively uh, quiet car. We're not having to, to shout here and to uh, to raise our voices to talk. So. Uh, Good job, Rivian. Very comfortable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, um, back to uh, the parking area here, and uh, then we'll just give you a quick interior tour and get John to walk through the menu for us, and uh, and that way you'll be able to see the vehicle. So from the interior again, um, you know the the steering wheel is pretty straightforward, uh, normal to what we've seen. We've got stocks for wipers, stocks for. As I mentioned, for shifting gears, a good good driver's binnacle display, very clear, crisp. You can see lots of information. Horns where it's supposed to be, and of course knobs and uh, turn things here. Rollers to change things with different menus. If you're hearing some noise, that's the compressor because we're changing the ride height. So you can hear the air compressor come on and off at times uh, when you're doing that. Very nice, clean display, uh, minimalistic to a point, but and, but very functional. I love the real wood. Now I'm going to get John to kind of walk through what he's learned as far as some of the common use cases for the display, just to show you that it's not as challenging as you may think. John. Sure, Ken. So down here, of course, you've got all the, the normal HVAC controls. There's the temperature. You click on that, and it comes up, and it's very similar to Tesla in that you, I think you can change these, you know, the way that the uh, air is going to direct, mm -hmm. very similar to what Tesla. Um, you know, automatic recycle. Um, it's got does have cooled seats. We've got our heated seats on right now. And turn those off. Uh, heated steering wheel mm -hmm. can control the front and back. Um, but you know, very similar to uh, most EVs. Controls along the bottom here: front defrost, rear defrost. Mm -hmm. uh, and then over here are the modes for a lot of the driving modes. So first of all, I use this for nav, and you can have the choice of the Google Earth view or the regular map view. Mm -hmm. I always prefer Google Earth, frankly. Yeah. And this seems very responsive, very similar to a, a Tesla game, which I'm comparing it to. Um, I haven't really used this yet, but they have a gear guard, uh, drive cam sort of thing, which is similar to a Tesla Sentry mode. Okay. Uh, music, great sound system. Um, the uh, speech, the, you know, the audio controls uses Alexa, which I don't see, it just came up there. Mm -hmm. uh, cancel, uh, not as quite as um, <laughs> yeah. in, intuitive as the, as the Tesla controls, sure, but anyhow, or some others, audio yeah. system is great. This is your drive modes, mm -hmm. and you can see right now we're in all purpose, which I think will put it into all wheel drive where it's necessary. Sorry, I didn't get that. The yeah. internet isn't reachable. Thanks, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> cancel. Oh. Um, the ride height, you can change it right now. If we have it in standard. When you park it and I go and lock it, it goes into, or actually when you when you park it, it goes into kneel mode mm -hmm. and uh, lower so it's a little yep. bit easier to get in and out. Um, you can change the regen settings as you can see here, the stability and whatnot. Uh, so we're in a, a mode that will go into all wheel drive if necessary. The highest is a conserve mode. You might want to show the uh, battery meter sure. there. Yeah. You can see that in conserve mode, it's going to show the highest range. And uh, unlike Tesla, you can see both the kilometers and the percentage in the battery. That's nice to see, yeah. And if I put it in all purpose, you'll see it drop down. Mm -hmm. And then there's a performance mode, which gives it a full torque. I think it's something like 835 horsepower. Um, and it automatically lowers the ride height. So you can see, I don't know if you can feel that, mm -hmm. it's starting yep. to lower and the range is lower, but that gives you, you know, instant torque, lots mm -hmm. of acceleration there. And then there's a snow mode, which gives you full-time all-wheel drive and uh, a lower uh, regen mm -hmm. uh, setting that you wouldn't have normally had in the uh, other version. Yeah, so again, just to help for anti-slippage, right. uh, even though it's got anti-lock and really good right. grip, but every little thing helps on, on Right, and on I haven't, snow. you know, Zinian is of course, but there's an off-road mode. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a trailer towing mode, Yep. right? Okay. The, the vehicle settings are here, um, so you can open the hood from here, charge port as you can see, mm -hmm. lift gate. Uh, control the, the mirrors and whatnot, um, turn the lights off and on, 
Um, and then there's some settings, which again are very similar to Tesla. Yep. It also took me a while to figure it out, but there's a, a menu down here. You can get down to things like oh. you want to see the cameras. It's like a quick menu. And it's got a mm -hmm. pretty good 360 view. Yeah, notice that, yeah, parked right. back into the spot here. Um, and what else? Camping mode, you can mm -hmm. get access to the owner's guide, uh, the battery. Mm -hmm. And it's got a pretty extensive um, screen here. Rear outlets, so you've got a 110 volt okay. outlets. Yep. It's got an air compressor in the back. Mm -hmm. They've got a charging schedule now, which they just added. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. And have you had a software update since getting yes, the car? Yes, I, I just got one last night. Okay, so they pushed and, it And uh, it, it, it gives now scheduled charging and mm. changes uh, the sensitivity of the throttle in reverse, a few other little mm -hmm. things, but very similar to Tesla that uh, there's new uh, updates every yep. 30 to 60 days from what I see on the forums. Cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah, very nice and easy. And, you know, obviously driver profiles, just like Tesla, so you can set, you know, if, 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 if I were to set this up, I have the mirrors, steering, anything that... Is, is electronically controllable. You can set with the driver profile, so your mirrors, your steering wheel, your seat positioning, and your your settings, your settings within infotainment, that kind of stuff. Right. Correct? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a nice it's feature. It's got the, um, the home, home link. Home link as well. Yeah. Yep. Integration. Same yep. thing. You drive up, which is nice because mm -hmm. it was uh, it was indicating that. Yeah. So a lot of Tesla-like features, just in a more you know uh, off-roadish, larger. Family hauling, keep, you know, towing and putting stuff in vehicle, right? Exactly. Than, than a Model X would be. So, exactly. Uh, yeah, very cool. All right. Thanks for the tour on that. So here's the back seat. Again, nice fit and finishes that John mentioned. A lot of little things which kind of you know makes these guys different. You know, uh, and again in the in the first launch edition, you have some yellow, you have some indicators showing that it is a launch edition. But very nice, comfortable seats. So if we get in the back here, it's okay to climb in, John. Yeah. Jump in. I might get some snow on the mats. Though. That's all right. And I literally have to climb in because it's big back here. But you do have your center HVAC stuff, so it's not a full entertainment screen, but it is HVAC so they can control heated seats, cooled seats, uh, heated seats in this case, and change some of the temperatures and flow. Yep. Um, center but, armrest. But really, center armrest, yeah, very yep. comfortable place to be in because these are designed for for taking people around. And uh, if I look at the third row seat and here. The seats recline too, Ken. These, if you can okay. see here, there's some. Yep. You know, you can so actually like change degree the seat. Almost yep. 15 degrees, something like yep. that. And this folds, nice. you can control the folding from, yep. from the rear. Okay. Yep. And then there's your third row. So again, you can fit two people. Um, would you say two adults or kind of two yeah, medium size? You know, you, you could get two people certainly of your height. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not that tall. Maybe a little skittier though. But I, 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 I will say that yeah. uh, apparently there's more room in the back of this than in Model X. Okay. Yeah. So for comparison, yeah, yeah. six or seven. So 000, very so. nice. So and then of course lots of room. There's still a, a good amount of boot space behind that third row, um, but uh, in front of the third row, and then you can see some of the leg room there. So yeah, decent. And again, that's what it's designed is for hauling people around and hauling stuff around. So good job on uh, Rivian. Do that. All right. So how would somebody get in, John? Well, you can adjust this seat for leg room for front uh, and the middle seat, and then mm -hmm. you fold this right up, and I, I then you can just. Climb yep, in the back here. Through, so. Yeah. so it's a little bit of climbing, but again, that's why this is an adventure vehicle. <laughs> it gives you an adventure to get in and out of it. <laughs> but that's a good thing. I just wanted to wrap up before uh, before I get to the wrap up part. I'll talk about pricing. So Canadian pricing on these uh, R1S is 116500 to start. That's what I'm seeing on the website right now. So I guess they're only having the, the larger pack vehicles coming the standards not coming to canada at this point r1t you can get for 109,000 canadian i guess probably on the larger pack as well u.s pricing starts at 85.8 and goes up to 87.6 for the base msrp there you can get the standard packs the smaller packs in u.s and climb from there so again if you're in the ballpark for a three-row suv that's capable that's got lots of storage room you can use a roof rack you can haul you can tow you can do almost anything in this vehicle then rivian's got something for you all right, and that's uh, it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. As man, I'm cold. <laughs> Got to get in the car, warm up a little bit again. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks again to John Dixon for letting me come out and uh, see his vehicle and experience uh, driving the R1S for the first time. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, this helps you in your decision-making process. If you're thinking of this vehicle, reach out to Rivian's website and check them out. And uh, if you have any questions, you can check with them or send me an email or a comment. Love to hear from you. All the details. Uh, 
uh, coming up at the end of the show and how you can reach me that way. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. And until the next show, everybody stay safe and warm, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>